All right, guys, so welcome back to NFT Talks podcast. And today, as always, always have amazing guests, uh, but I'm excited to have these guys on because we're venturing into new realms. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of NFTs has been driven by the art industry, but now we're going to be looking into the entertainment industry. Uh, and we've got two great guys here. We have Neil and we have Alex, obviously Neil, a.k.a. the NFT guru. <laughs> and we have Alex, who's an actor. You might recognize him from the Marvel series, Hawkeye. Um, I'm literally just going to talk NFT today. So how are you guys doing? Fantastic, Excellent, man. Thank you. Excellent. Thrilled to be on with you. Yeah, I'm happy to have you guys on, man. Um, I mean, how, how's the last, say, last year been for you? Uh, look, I mean, venturing into the NFT space. I mean, what's your thoughts on it? Like, <laughs> it's been amazing for me. I mean, but I just want to hear your perspective. Like, what's going on? What is this? You know, yeah, I can start. I mean, I, I've been in blockchain for, oh goodness, five years. Uh, always been a fan of NFTs, moreover, just for their opportunity, not, you know, I, I'm an art lover. So some projects I like, some projects I respect, others I'm kind of, eh. yeah. but, uh, but the application and the technology of them, I've always been blown away. And when I had the opportunity to, to join House of Kiba um, and, and help guide it, you know, maybe a little bit it's it's been incredible and then being able to what house of kiba prides ourselves on is being the home for artists everything we do whether you're a musician an actor a fine artist we want to be that place for artists where um we provide the tools and the framework that allow artists to build incredible projects so um for me it's been it's, it's been incredible and then getting to work with a you know a great friend of mine, I've known Alex 15 years. Uh, and the second we had a chance to get into live action, I was like, I know who I need to call. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I'll say that in the NFT world, um, the people I think that do it best are the people that recognize their weaknesses. The people that say, all right, here's what I do really well. Let's get a partner that addresses my weakness. The people that try to do it all, it's, you know, it just doesn't work. But we we knew that if we were going to do a live action series, we thought that the first one for us to go after was the sci-fi community because there's a lot of similarities between the NFT community and the sci-fi community, right? They're both full of huge nerds. They're that these nerds get really excited. And by the way, I count myself among them, so I was saying yeah. that pride. Um, <laughs> these nerds get really excited about the stuff we get excited about. And then we become passionate collectors and community members that um, are just being proactive with other projects and other groups. So it was kind of this natural marriage. But the last part was you can't go with either community half-assed. You can't bring something fake or gimmicky to the NFT world or they suss it out. We see that with a lot of celebrity projects that yeah. are either rugs or trying to grab money. And the sci-fi community is equally protective right like if we just tried to come in with an nft gimmick it wouldn't work so i knew that if i was going to do something in acting in the sci-fi world i had to get a pro i had to go after someone that quite frankly the biggest thing alex brings is a reputation in the industry of being an actor's actor being um someone that when he calls everybody picks up the phone it doesn't matter if it's paul white Formerly known as Big Show or Jason Momoa or whoever else. Mm. Not saying we're doing something with Jason Momoa. <laughs> just, just saying that when Alex calls, he's got to pick up the phone immediately because of his reputation. And um, not just actors, creators, producers, writers, everywhere in the world. So that's how I I, I roped him into our world. I don't know if what what. what... I mean, I mean, I, I think the, the question about. NFTs and how has it been through COVID? For me, I've been, you know, fortunate with um, a, a buddy of mine who I did a film with, with Anthony Hopkins, and he wanted to do an NFT film called Zero Contact. Yeah. And that was, we literally started on Friday the 13th, the first day Canada got locked down, is when we started <laughs> like talking about this project. Nowhere did we ever think that. Anthony Hopkins would jump on and it would be done all just on Zoom. You know, the, the play on words of zero contact, literally there was zero contact in this film. And so that's when I started getting introduced uh, to NFTs and what NFTs were about. I am nowhere near the knowledge, especially with this cat, 
of what NFTs can do or, or, or how it based in the community in the beginning. Um, so being a part of that film and seeing the success in the NFT world and how it's how it, how it's community building. And I love like that this is artist driven and, and it really magnifies the community. I love that because I, I'm on Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram. I love communicating with my fans. And again, he said sci-fi fans are most passionate fans. And I, these are the type of projects where you sit back and go, not only are they always giving to us, we go out there, we work on a show and we have a fun time on the show and fans love the show and they will do anything to get to Comic-Con, to do cosplay. They pour their souls and their money into a show that they like. We're in an opportunity where we can not only uh, give them a great, great content of a show, but there's a community involved. There's people that they can trade with back and forth. They can actually own something and then sell it. Like that's the stuff where I'm going, uh, you're not spending all your money on something. You're actually building community. And then, yeah. so that was like the idea with, with uh, Zero Contact and starting to understand NFTs. And then Neil approached me with this opportunity where I don't think he even know how like inside I was jumping around like a, like a little <laughs> school girl going, this is amazing and that, that I have this opportunity, not only to do a sci-fi, the first live action NFT sci-fi show, but I get to do it with one of my good friends. And that to me is something really special. And on top of that, um, to bring people into our, our, our world that, that Neil wanted to create, mm. uh, Matt, Venables and, and Jeremy Smith, who were uh, who are great friends of mine, but we started because they were writers of Van Helsing that I was on for five years. So we already built not only a friendship but a great working relationship. It wasn't something yeah. that it was like I hope we I hope we can work well together. It was we already know, and they're such talented writers and creators that this became more of a family, which made the community even more. Uh, where we are tighter yeah. and it brings people in because we do a podcast fireside every Friday and we have a blast like we yeah. want to keep doing this stuff yeah. because we love being around each other and creating so the <laughs> NFT world is the, the NFT world is very new to me but what it's created what I've really seen it create is a sense of community that that is by far more than I've ever seen on any other kind of network yeah you guys touched on so many things there that I think is so important. Um, that, that obviously, you, you, first of all, um, Neil, you mentioned bring, not trying to do things that you're not, if you're not passionate about it, that isn't your, your prime skill, entering the space, do what you're good at. I mean, whether you're a high profile actor or whether you're an up and coming artist, a lot of people will enter the space and try and copy and replicate what has been done because it makes money. But I feel that it's so early in the space, what you've got to do is bring your talents and think how you can apply NFTs to what you do. And then yeah. the, fact, the fact that what you said, uh, Alex, is that you was involved with a uh, zero contact, um, first of all. That was your first, obviously, being involved with the NFT space. But now this you've, you've, you've kind of fronted, you're, you're the front man for this project. And that should be the approach. That shows that you're just not coming here and saying, look, I'm a big actor, I want to do this, you, it's kind of a humble beginning, um, understanding, learn as you go along, building, collaborating with credible people that understand the space. And I thought that should be the approach for everybody, whether you're a big actor, whether you're up and coming, I just think that is the approach. Uh, and I feel that based on what you said, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to hear more about what you guys are doing. Um, but yeah, like I just wanted to touch on that because I thought that is just, this needs to be, it needs to be said out loud to people for people to understand that that's the approach because everyone tries everyone thinks it's money there's a lot of money in here but yeah it's what you do and you're creating and that value being authentic yeah being of course authentic and, yeah. And, and it starts with content not with the the goals of where we can go with nft it starts yeah. with content is this something that we would be excited is this a project we're going to yeah, be yeah. excited about working with mm -hmm. and everything else will fall into place but right now we want to give not only ourselves but the fans great content and and that's where it starts so yeah okay so, so just to touch on it when you first heard about heard about entities alex did you understand it straight away i mean this is i, I didn't know. i mean I, I was kind of like what what, what is this <laughs> i mean how long did it take you to grasp what was going on <laughs> probably about 50 meetings with him of, of <laughs> yeah. like slowly explaining it to me but and i still got a ton a ton to learn i'm learning yes. every day about the nft space and it's 
And the more I, the more I learn about it, the more excited I get at the fact that coming from an actor's background and I'm, I, I started as a fan, like when I grow, grew up, like, you know, things that I enjoyed were things that I was fans of. I mean, everyone is a fan of something. So yeah. for, for me to be a fan of something, I, I, I want to I be seen and I want to be appreciated and I want to enjoy the thing that I'm a fan of. Mm. And this NFT space is, is so community friendly. Yeah. And so um, um, it encompasses this marriage between content and, and viewer that we yeah. can actually all have a say and we actually all have a blast doing it and and the one thing that i i mean this whole discord thing was new to me yeah. and i couldn't believe the support that fans had for each other of trying to understand discord and then people from our discord were just helping that i'm like this is you don't see this on twitter you don't see this on yeah. any other platform so for me i didn't know anything i'm still learning and and the more i learned from neil the more excited i got for the community and the fans and that we get to do something that the community is involved with as opposed to we get to do something that the community can admire yeah if that makes sense now that does make sense um i'll just neil touching on what you're probably better suited to answer this is bring if you talk about communities uh and i feel that the space isn't that big yet there isn't lots of people in here so then okay then it's in order for space to grow we need to kind of onboard people to the NFT space. And it's great having guys like yourself, uh, Alex has already got a community outside in the real world and kind of bringing them into this space. But it's gotta be, I, I thought it's good, they've gotta be protected. I think there's a lot of education around it because a lot of people, never mind NFTs, they don't understand blockchain, they don't understand tokenomics, they don't understand how to have a digital wallet. So what kind of things are you, you guys got in place for the community uh, to be onboarded? That's a, that's a great question. And I think you, you, you've you nailed it, right? I mean, um, we, we're just in the middle of actually, either today or tomorrow, we're going to roll out our new website, um, genzeros.com. Anyone out there that wants to learn more, go check it out. But I mean, like anyone that wants to learn more about NFTs as well, go check it out. Like mm -hmm. we know that there's basically going to be three people that, that visit our website, right? You're going to get the fan that already knows exactly about nfts they're going to come in the first button they're going to click is connect wallet yeah. they know what that means they know what it does and that's cool then you're going to get the person that comes in like all right this is interesting i'm a fan of alex i'm a fan of big show like, i'm going to come in and learn a bit more about the project and then you get those people that come in and go this seems cool i've heard about nfts no idea what they are and literally we're gonna have a button that says like learn more bring them yeah. in educate them but I think the big thing for me um, that I want people to know about, I think everything you just said there, right? NFTs, tokenomics, blockchain. I think people try to drink from the fire hose and think they're all one thing and they're mm -hmm. not, right? I mean, it's, they're all separate pieces. And as Alex said, the only thing that's gonna bring people into this Web3 world is great content and great stories. Yeah. Web3, when it comes down to it, or it's just a, it's a toolbox. NFT yeah. is a tool, blockchain is a tool, tokenomics is a, is a system of, of tools. Um, and if the tool makes sense, then it's just, it's easy to use, right? Like if you just walk someone into a shed for gardening and tell them now go grow plants, they're going to have no idea what they're doing. But if you bring them into a garden and you show them some flowers and you put a shovel beside them, they're going to figure out what that does. And I think that's the problem is people try to like, just throw people into a shed and be like, it's amazing. And they're yeah. like, what the <laughs> hell is all this? And I think that one of the really cool things is we see it as our role to educate as well. NFTs, as Alex said, they do two things. It's IP protection for artists and mm -hmm. it's a connection between the person that created that thing and the person that's holding it. That's it, full stop, that's what an NFT is. When you try to get go beyond that into the blockchain and how it works, it's a different conversation. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, all valid points. I know. I mean, I'm really excited. Um, is it, NFTs disrupting industries and the entertainment industry? Obviously, is a massive industry, multi-billion dollar industry, um, and it's been f structured in one way for so long. Now, NFTs is going to allow a lot of different use cases of how we can produce or put out content like you said uh, uh alex so 
I feel I think the real value is is being able to put out content and bringing value to the to the audience, whether it's access, uh, whether it's exclusive collectibles, and, and these these are the kind of things you've got uh, you guys have got put in place with, it, with regards to your project. Is that right? And it's what's really cool about that. I'll let Neil even take over. But what, yeah. for me, what was so crazy was we literally yesterday had a meeting in in this room talking about what we can give to the audience, what kind of utilities we can give, what kind of bundles can we do, there, what kind of stages we can give the most that we can get, get for the to, most that we can give the audience that would be fans of this. And yeah. so we started breaking down like, like, no, I think this would be more valuable to the fans. Like the fans need more of this. And, and Neil was breaking it down for us. And I was just literally like home alone sitting there like this, like, this is amazing. Like, like to, me being a fan of something and having this many branches to the tree that I can be a part of the show would be such a huge honor to be a part of that community. And yeah. that's how I was thinking about it when he was explaining it. But I mean, he can talk more about the utilities aspect. Of yeah. It. So no, but I mean, you, you nailed it, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. going to be a couple of things. There's going to be the collectibles are, are an obvious one. I mean, mm -hmm. the rarity of it. Um, but we also, one of the things we're really fortunate with House of Keep is we have incredible artists already in the house, right? We've got guys that have worked at Marvel and Disney and, and built Mandalorian, like incredible artists. So the con if you go to our Twitter, or you go to our Discord, when you see the teasers of what we're rolling out artwork-wise, I mean, we're so proud of that. Yeah. Um, so the collectibles are easy, but we talk a lot about exactly what Alex said. So it's not, we never ever want to be known as a company where we're just it's a cash grab. We want to be known as the company where you get great value for your time. Because yes. really that's what it is, right? It's how much, if you just buy something and put it in a wallet and you're speculating, we don't want those people owning our, our, our stuff. We want the people that are going to, for example, one of the things we're going to be dropping, um, I guess I'm allowed to say. I was it. just gonna say, are you allowed <laughs> to say this? So it, it's called Bishop's Key. Bishop okay. Alex plays Bishop. He's our main character. It's gonna okay. be this this key. But the cool part, we're not gonna say what that key opens, right? So that and it's not gonna open just one thing. Like it's, but because of that, it's gonna provide all of these opportunities for the community to engage in. Oh, is that what it opens? Is that what it does? Okay. And yes, and engage. When we go into the metaverse, you're gonna be able to use that to unlock things both in the series, in the metaverse, and in the real world. Okay. And that is like, that's what we see. That's great value where if we throw this event in New York, you need Bishop's Key to get something out of it, mm -hmm. right? Like it's it, it's building this connection to the, to the community that's just next level. And then working with, uh, there's one group we cannot announce. Don't yet. say it. Okay. Yeah, don't say it. <laughs> Yeah. A little bit, just give, give a little bit exclusive. I hold it back. <laughs> no, but, but this one, this one literally is going to be iconic. I mean, okay. but it, it's it's a partnership that is going to blow people away. And again, but it's merging that physical and digital realm, and that's something we talk about a lot of how do we give more and more value. It's not about yeah. the cash; it's about value. So, yeah. and, then, and then one thing that we're dripping out right now. This isn't a secret, but. We've been figuring out exactly what you said is how do we disrupt, Alex always calls it old Hollywood. How do we disrupt that? House of Kiba is gonna be announcing very soon um, a new arm of what we're doing just around this community, around everything. And then it's gonna be a form of a DAO that allows people to pick direct, uh, not, I shouldn't say direct, but direct how a, a thing, a show is getting shaped. They can shape, I should say. Yeah. Uh, where it's going and that is going to be so cool and it, what's interesting about being you know being an actor for over 20 years and seeing you know some really like amazing projects that only get one episode or only get a pilot and then other projects that people may go like how how, how did this show get four seasons and yes. how can i get involved in something that is creative unless you're already at the echelon of the hollywood industry this allows there's so many projects out there that that friends of mine have that i go this why is this not a show this should be a show and they're like i i, I can never get it past this level yeah this yeah. is where we can really kind of get the actors that are creator and the and the writers that haven't broken in, into yeah. that hollywood structure where we, we're going to get some amazing content 
where we can help produce and where we can help get it out there because it's artist driven. That's that's the thing that that drives me so insane about this industry and and the space is that we can do things that are artist driven and we have you know great people that can be a part of that to help guide it to the next level so that's what's really exciting about this space is that there's going to be stuff out there that would never see the light of day unfortunately because there's so many projects happening in this kind of echelon level but yeah. the artists can drive it yeah, I mean, just before we get into obviously Gen Zero, the actual because I want actually want to talk about that because we kind of touched on it, but we need to let the people know what's going on. But I, I mean, you've you touched on it earlier on, Neil, is the Web three space. I really feel it's about getting the value for your contribution. So as a fan, you contribute your time to watching, um, whether it's a series or a film, and now you're able to, as a production or a film company, have to give something back to the fans, and at least it's. Not get it twisted like film fans are like if one of the craziest fans star wars dc marvel crazy fans real hot uh, real fans so it's something that that community um i think that hasn't really hasn't really had for uh, any point um, unless you've got the kind of money to kind of spend and get all these collectibles or so i really think it's interesting um for the entertainment industry and, and the kind of things that it's going to offer for fans because i think it's a win-win on both ends because if everyone takes this role, like it's it's going to bring lots so much value. You're going to understand what the fans want, and then it's going to be a an ongoing thing for the future. I just feel that it's just the best way to do it. And if we introduce like DeFi and uh, not going off from NFTs, but like you said earlier on, uh, Alex is up and coming uh, producers, and if people buy into the idea, people can buy the NFT and maybe own a part of that potentially uh, of that of that that script and. Once again, like it, they can get the funding to go ahead without going through all these doors and getting blocked and really get the value. And then from the ground level, they have fans, which is amazing. It just makes sense for creatives. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But guys, let's go into obviously <laughs> your projects. I want to hear about everything. What is about the concept first? Because I'm really, I'm really interested in that because I really, when I was reading about it, I thought it was, is it PF? the entertainment industry uh the way you've done with the the, the, the faction characters and whatnot but guys i, I want to hear more all right i'll kick it off so you thought you <clears throat> thought the pandemic was bad 2022 this year world gets ravaged by aliens so <laughs> they're coming the war we're warning everybody right now um no but it's the the story is set 200 years in the future um mm -hmm. And imagine a world that's emerging from utter devastation, right? And what happens when borders get redrawn, the world has pulled together to do something great and fight a common enemy, but that enemy is then doesn't return. Mm -hmm. Human nature takes over and we start attacking each other. And then where do we go from there? And in many ways, you can see a lot of parallels between what the world just went through. The yep. world went through this thing where we pulled together, we fought COVID, Second, we get out of COVID, there's a war. Like it's just crazy. It's, it's, <laughs> and, and, and this idea of, of greed, and, and it explores greed, and um, we explore concepts like AI and, and the emergence of technologies. And I think that Matthew, Matt, and Jeremy have written an incredible story. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I'll just run, run on for one second. When we started this project, I went to the board and we, we got approved. Like I, I said to Alex, I said, you would be the perfect faction leader for one of these things. But we were honestly planning on just shooting like a faction leader, something small, maybe a voiceover, mm -hmm. um, kind of just giving really good value to our, our people that own the Gen Xs. When Jeremy and Matt came back with the script they wrote and an arc for like five seasons because they went deep on this world we knew we had to make a series out of it. Like, and, and it, it grew. And then when we shared that story of the gen zeros with like, we have like top tier sci-fi talent in this got people from Battlestar Galactica, the hundred, you know, big show from WWE. Like when these guys saw it, they jumped on board and it's, it's just snowballed from there. So, and, and I, and I think the, the, the idea is basically, you know, aliens attacked in 2022, and then we pick up the show um, when, when they attacked, they took all the resources that the earth had. They weren't here to dev devastate uh, humans. They were here to just take all the resources, 
had docks that they would have and they and as when they took everything that we had and the people that fought didn't didn't couldn't didn't last and the people yeah. that hid away just hoped that it would go away were the ones that stayed so when the aliens left and they took all our resources they still had their their um a, the, the, their um, technology. their technology here so we uh, reverse engineered the technology but the, the the population of the planet is back to the stone age if anything just because of how it went down so now you know when we fought the aliens were there all the nations got together we obviously didn't win in that way but now it's now it's time to regrow the earth and which which faction is right in the way the world should work and that's how they start kind of getting at each other of how the technology and how it works so matt and jeremy came up with this idea built on the backs of the gen x's that were created by house of kiba which became very popular and, and did some amazing things. And we basically said, how can we, how can we feed the community more? And that's when Neil came to, to me and go, we can give them more by let's doing live action. And so the story arc and the 10 factions built on the backs of the Gen X's that were already created and that already became, were successful. That's what makes it really exciting is that we're taking existing content that that House of Kiba is, is absolutely proud to have to have produced and now we're taking that to the next level for those fans um and the worlds that that we created and the different factions that are created are something that you know i'm blown away at matt and jeremy um yeah. minds how yeah. they how they cool. came up with the storyline and it just kept on building and we just finished shooting a few weeks ago the first four episodes and just to give you a breakdown the way episodes quote unquote chapters it would it's basically one faction goes through a story of character building which would be about five minutes mm -hmm. but what we do is we switch we switch me mediums and we go right into a comic book and so then you have about eight eight to twelve pages of a comic book of what the the, the chronological event that has happened that, that has led them to this comic book style and then we go into the next faction and then we go into the comic book so what i love about that is that the viewer gets to watch the, the the live action the way we would want them to watch it just like any other film that that tries to evoke emotion from a drama you're going to have that music cue you're going to have to make the camera in a little closer we're trying to get an emotion out of you to have that experience in film what i love is with the comic book you're going to read it differently than i'm going to read it yeah he's going to read it differently than I'm going to read it. So it's their own personal experience with the comic book. And then we go back into live action to carry the story. That's that. I love that. It's a good point because I mean, a lot, for example, Harry Potter, a, a lot of people that read the book always say that it's nothing like I thought the film was going to be like and so on. So having both like mediums, like uh, the book, and then it, it gives that, that it opens creativity, doesn't it? And opens people's perceptions and I think that's what it's about. That that I think I love that, and I feel like the community sci-fi. I think it's perfect. <laughs> them guys, like I said, uh, just kind of go wild with their creativity and have their perception of how things will end up. And then, correct me if I'm wrong. If you have the NFT, like you said, you can kind of add your contribution to where you think things should go. So not only they're having their own perception of when they're reading it, they can say that I want it to go this way. Is that right? No, it, it's not quite a choose your own adventure. Okay. But we are going to have story points that encourage the community to vote and get involved okay. a little bit later. Okay. Uh, the, the early ones, we're going to set the world up. Yeah. And then we'll invite people into the world to help, sh help shape it. Okay. So, kind of set the ground rules, set the factions, set the characters. And then we'll invite people in to kind of help shape it, kind of give them that, give them that feel. But it's absolutely where we're going with it. Tell me about the factions then, because obviously it's 10 factions. Um, as you, if you go on the site, you can see there's kind of 10 characters. Uh, if, so what do people buy the entities and they, do they get to pick their faction or do they, do they get it by random? And then once they're in that faction, they only can see content from that faction or can like- <laughs> You're gonna hire this guy. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yes and no. So, you know, we're, we're, we're planning this whole campaign of which faction are you okay um like you know who, who are you going to align with because yeah alex is the head of the aurora faction which are these you know brutes that live up in the north and they've got this they're you know defense first but they're also you know 
we're flipping it on its head. These big guys that everyone always casts as like, you know, hulking, mm -hmm. you know, brutes. They're also some, some of the smartest scientific minds in the world, what they're engineering, what they're doing. Uh, we got the children of them, which is this like scavenger hyena esque punk rocker faction. We've got new earth that's repopulating the earth through growth. We've got Eros, which as Jeremy always says, both literally and figuratively think they're above people. Um, mm -hmm. And they're actually, Based in Britain, okay. <laughs> right. uh, not <laughs> not saying that you're above us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, the character, but no, but no one's a bad guy, right? They all just have mm -hmm. different views of what they think the world should be. Yeah, and um, don't know. You can't say. No, 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 but 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 it's. <laughs> um, Okay, so are you? Is there a potential chance you may give the if you give the the descriptions of these factions? Is there a potential chance that people can buy in to say, look, I really like what they believe in, so I'm going to buy that NFT. Hundred percent. So you're creating yeah, so tribes. Some are <laughs> random, but then you can collect it as well. You can get some yeah. unique things. And and it's also it's one of those things where like you may be a fan of of me and and want to be a part of my faction going you know oh, I want to be a part of Aurora because. I'm a fan of Alex Ponovic, but then when we announce the cast later on, you're like, oh, okay, not Alex. I like this guy. <laughs> and then you can actually trade with somebody to become a part of their faction who wants to switch over. So there's this really sense of, you know, almost like the, those hockey cards that you would get, a soccer mm -hmm. cards. You know, the only thing that you know you have is the gum and everything in there is kind of random. And then you can go, well, I have like two Alex's and, and one of Tom O'Panikin. I, I want I want to sell that one so I can get that. So you become a part of that whole community of, you know, and later on in the episodes, you may not like the things that I'm doing, a part of Aurora Clan going, you know what, I'm over Aurora Clan. I want to go into to this other new faction. So that kind of thing is going to happen where we're going to, allows the community to figure out what where they want to be. And the first place doesn't always have to be that they can sell that and, yeah, and, just kind of, and then just stay there what is the um i mean i'm just digging deeper now because if you tell me more I'm like i want to know more so yeah, what, yeah. um the, the is there going to be one outcome like one winner as we call it one faction that kind of has kind of i'm not doing no 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 you know, is there no way, man. <laughs> Is it, I mean, or is it the case of is is it a possibility for collaboration? Like, so can I can I be a multi owner of many factions and be a part of all of them and have a say? Like, then does that make me a spy? Like, am I, I'm kind of encouraging, oh, wow. Wow. I'm encouraging something over here and saying that over here and then really trying to get that faction to work. Like, are these are the things that is this how far we can go? I guess this is the exciting thing about Web three, isn't it, and NFTs because we can kind of run wild with the creativity and, and add them things on as we go along. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's really cool. I mean, I, I like that idea of, I mean, maybe your wallet betrays you, right? Like you, maybe you identify as an Aurora clan, <laughs> connect your wallet and all you have is children of them. We're like, uh-uh, mm -mm, no. You, but see, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing that, that that's so cool is that we were talking about this the other day and someone on Discord mentioned something that we're going to be announcing on Friday on our podcast, Fireside. And okay. someone mentioned something on Discord, a fan, and then we sat around going, oh man, that's a great idea. Yeah. So we're gonna be, when we go to do our fireside, we're gonna give props to that person and say, that was a great idea and we're actually implementing it. And that's yeah. how cool this, this thing is. So yeah, now we're gonna steal your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's fine, as long as I get the shout out, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, 100%, 100% we'll call you out. That, but, um, I love yeah. that idea actually, that's cool. yeah, I, this, this is, okay, this is the great thing is like we, it's, being real creative, isn't it? And not having the the barriers in place and the rules that you have to kind of abide by. Um, just, and like you said, you've got some of the top guys in the industry doing this and I'm sure they're, they're being waiting to do something like this, but they have to kind of abide by certain rules and in in the industry. So it's I'm, I'm really excited for, for what you guys have got to come. I mean, tell me a bit more about the utility side um, in regards to, what you can do, what does it, what do you get? If you're part of fa a faction, do you get something merch for that faction, for example, or them kind of things? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So it, uh, we've done a couple of things. The first is um, until we really get into the show, as Alex said, yeah. it's more like a little bit collectibles, limited edition though. We're not going to do like unlimited. It's going to be really kind of cool that way. Um, the, the blurring of physical and digital, absolutely. Like, 
there's going to be some wearables that you can actually access them in real life as well. Um, yeah, we, we have talked about that. If you have that faction card, that's the only way you can get the merch from that faction. Um, so we're really introducing some interesting things like that for sure. The, you have to have any one of the NFTs to be able to watch the show. Okay. So yeah. the show is going to be gated. The comic books are going to be gated. But there's multiple entry points, right? From, you know, people are like, we're going to be encouraging our community after they get those faction cards. Uh, they're going to be on Polygon. So no high gas prices. You can swap them easy. Okay. Like we're going to encourage you. Like if you, if you buy one of our NFT packs, we're, there's like four in there for you to give away. Like give them to your okay. friends, get them in, let them come see what's happening. Um, but the idea being, this is, as you kind of said, putting Hollywood on its head, right? I mean, we thought a lot about, do we want to get as many eyeballs or do we want to get like passionate community members that bring it in slowly and have it be something that belongs to them a bit more? And I think that when you think about the evolution of, of projects, you know, sometimes a project can get ruined if you try to make it mass market too fast, mm. right? Like if you, if you just try to say, well, we're going to make this and make everyone happy, it, 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 it takes away from the show. So we, when, when I started this and before I even spoke to Alex, I know that my, I don't know how to make this. I don't know what to do. What I do know how to do is how to create an environment where these guys can thrive. And that's what I see my role is, and I hope I'm, I'm doing it okay, is just putting up the, putting up the, uh, the force field around these guys to let them create. You know, like I'm not giving, I, I give a couple of notes here and there. They're they, great notes. They all get knocked down. <laughs> That's no good. Guys, Shut up. <laughs> dude, I, want, I want that you came in to give notes to one, one thing. And I'm literally being like the, the Hollywood guy. And I'm kind of sitting like, oh my God, he's going to come and give notes to the stuff we just did. And he gave these notes. I was like, that was actually pretty good, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't take that away from you. That was really good. And so he's got he's got great creative mind. So that helps us a lot too but, because but, we, but we honestly, just love that, working together. That that's not my role, right? When we started this, I said to Matt and Jeremy, "No bounds. You guys write whatever you want. Like wherever the story, it has to be a good story. Because if we don't put out a good product, the community is going to know. You know, if, if we try to say, "Hey, uh, Sean, I want you to be able to sell NFTs in this." episode it's just going to ruin the product right yeah so where the story went but what was cool is exactly what alex said that ability of listening to the community being like that is a really good idea that can integrate well here let's do that and it shaped everything in a way that is really really and authentic and that's what we were doing yesterday when we had this meeting about utilities of what can we bring to the audience that gives them the best bang for their buck and again, I'm new at this. I'm totally new at this. So just sitting there and being a fan more than anything, thinking in a fan kind of headspace of going, yeah. I would love that. That stuff, that yeah. stuff is cool. And especially being involved with the, the you know, I think this, the story that we built on the backs of already the, the Gen X's is that there's 10 different factions. So there's fans to pick from so many things that are there that, that, that speak to them. Um, New Earth. New Earth is all about, you know, getting the, 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 the Earth back its life of greenery and, and botany. And, and, and so there could be somebody out there that's going, that, that's totally my jam. I want to be a part of that faction. So there's so many ways for people to go. And we were lucky enough that the project that came to us gave us that ability without forcing it. Yeah, I think something that was real unique and that I've noticed, Alex, is that um, the passion for the project from yourself like i feel that okay acting is a job ultimately you may love it but there i'm sure i'm not sure if there's every job you do you love you may think okay it's it's, it's a good role but do i really love the story mm, oh, oh, it's a job isn't it but you're very involved and you're even able to contribute which is very unique a position have you ever had experienced that in any of roles you've had before Man, I, I've been, I've, been, I've produced some small stuff, and, and the thing is, I, I love that idea of being a part of a machine. I love being an actor. I, I love creating a role and creating a backstory. But I'm literally like, as the train is moving, moving as an actor, I'm literally jumping on and then jumping off, and it keeps on going. To be a part of the team, to be a part of the machine, is something that I'm really passionate about. That that I love to hear where the story goes. I love to hear a creative part of the story that I have, my actor has no involvement in. I just want to be a part of the, the, the machine. 
that's why it's so passionate because I think we're breaking new ground. And I, I just feel really fortunate that that Neil came to me and that I get to kind of play in this space and, and create with people that I love. You, you know what was really cool about this project? And I didn't know it was cool at the time was, um, it, I come from a, a sports background and you know I remember finishing a game and I, I, I want to go watch the other teams play, just curious what they're doing, interested, but just as a fan. But after we filmed episode one, and so we had, it was over a couple of days, and after day one, some of the actors that were done, they didn't have to come back the next day, as you said, their job, they literally came and asked me, they're like, hey, Neil, do you mind if we come tomorrow and hang out? And I'm like, yeah, of course you can. And then I go to Alex, I go, why did they ask? Like, isn't that just kind of understood? And he literally, Alex goes to me, he goes, actors don't do that. Mm -hmm. He goes, like, typically when you're done, actors and even some of the cast and crew came back just because they were like into this yeah and that to me was to learn that 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 this was that we're creating this true family and true team that wanted to see what was going to happen that to me was like okay cool we, we've got something that's man. pretty it was pretty <laughs> special it was pretty special yeah. so alex as you as a fan as you as you said you're a fan of obviously the project does that mean you're going to lead one faction and be a fan of another faction for a collector. <laughs> oh. Potentially. There's some, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him an out here. I'll give, I'll, I'll give him an out. One of the even cool things we're doing is, I told you a little bit about that collaboration we haven't announced yeah. yet. It's going to be iconic. But we might even have factions that do collaborations with individual artists. So he might be able to collect something for, um, with, Eros. for Eros, if Eros did a, did a collaboration with a specific musician or a specific artist, just with that faction, right? So it'll allow him, you know, I'll give him such good, that's together. a great question, man. <laughs> just so, throwing, the, throwing the spanners in the way that you're not thinking about, thinking I'm going to leave this faction, but I might actually like this one over here, but this is, yeah. I mean, like I said, who's you lot are creating the rules as, as we go along and why not? Like, is it, about, yeah, is it really being separated or is it just about venturing and looking to different perspectives and having an open mind i think that's what the space is about collaboration working together so why not i don't think you don't see why you can't work the project there's always alliances there's, right yeah there's always yeah. alliance and you know what, what's really great i mean yeah we, we filmed my episode where i was the leader of the faction but the cool thing is sitting back and we were losing our minds at some of the performances oh, yeah. from the other factions and i literally was going i kind of want to be i kind of want to hang out with those guys <laughs> And it's like, no, you got your own fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next question is, when's the game coming out? <laughs> uh, game's, game's coming out. I actually get the first playable today. Oh. I get the first playable today. I know. Uh, besides the team that's been building it. Again, I've just been letting them. We, we hired an incredible team. They've built AAA products before. They got so excited about it. It kept getting more and more um, ambitious. I'm going to put it that way. And uh, they've stitched it together because it got built in like five different pieces, right? Like the player management, strategy, all these different pieces. They've tied it together. I heard the soundtrack. We had the soundtrack yesterday. The soundtrack is just bangers. Um, and we're actually stealing that composer to do some other stuff. He was incredible. Young guy out of New Zealand. Um, but game will be coming out a uh, matter of weeks, not months. I okay. Mean, Wow. Okay. A couple, yes. a couple of months, but not like six kind of thing. So okay. uh, I'll, I'll check it today and I'll let you know. How far <laughs> that, away it is. That's something really exciting. I think you've, you've brought a lot of components into this, this, uh, this project. So I think that's, that's what it's about innovation and just really experimenting. And it seems like that's what you guys are doing and enjoying it. And like I said, the worst, the, the most important thing I, I can, I feel like you guys are enjoying this and, the way you deliver it, it's, it makes me want to know more, you know, so I think that's going to be great uh, for, for the community. Um, oh, man. That, that, feels, yeah. that feels great, man, because, yeah, we are extremely passionate about this. It's, it's, it's very rare as an actor we get this kind of, like, um, passion from other actors that want to be a part of it and, and the team in general. It's been it's been an amazing journey so far, and we just want to keep it going and, and just do good things for good people and, and just kind of move forward, you know. Yeah. So moving as you're talking about actors, Alex, what does this what does NFTs mean for actors? I mean, apart from I'm sure they're getting approached by 
agencies and saying, look, we want to get, like you said earlier on, you get access, you can get a Zoom call with yourself or so on. What, have you got any ideas, any thoughts, because you've been involved in this, what does this mean for actors in the future? How do they use NFTs, whether they're being a part of projects? Or I'm not really sure about the, the, the entertainment industry in regards to how it works. Like I know the music industry is very rigged and not really value, not a lot of value goes to the creator, but I'm not sure how it works for yourself. So is there any ways that NFTs are going to change the way actors do business and approach work in the future? I think it is because because there's so many <clears throat> aspects of revenue. For instance, like not just actors. For instance, the idea that you know our our costume department, um, you know, they get paid a certain amount on a show and they do their thing. Mm -hmm. But with NFTs and with being a part of this project, the design that she did on a piece of paper of my costume, she can now sell that as an NFT. And there could be somebody out there that wants to really be in costume to go and as a fan of like being the, the wardrobe department yeah. and go like, I want to own the first thing of, of that. So she gets a little bit of, of that kind of recognition and, and financial support, which I think they absolutely deserve <clears throat> through their creativity. And I think it's the same for actors, you know, with faction cards and, and character cards that behind that, the scenes, behind stuff, the scenes, takes, stuff, yeah. Yeah. all kinds of cool stuff, everything that they can be involved with. And, you know, there's a lot of times where, especially in, in when you're doing independent film, or even if you're doing something else, you, you don't get to see the revenue of the character that you built from an uh, action figure that's owned by the company. This is an opportunity where there could be percentages of the NFT going to the actual actor, and it's verifiable that you can't hide that. So those are the cool things that I think actors deserve because they build this amazing character and fans are coming to see this amazing character. At first, when you get the, when you get the, the script, you're looking at a script and going, how can I make this character the most compelling it can be a part of the show? And that's a lot of hard work for an actor and to, to, and they deserve to get paid and they do get paid and they get paid great money. But then what goes on beyond that with all the utilities that they could actually get. So that to me as an actor to get uh, more for their creation is something that's really exciting to actors. Yeah, that's a valid point. And that, that's true. I mean, like I said, some the actors contribute to creating this this character and some of the biggest characters and, the, and people become fans of them characters, but the company that owns the IP makes all the money after. I mean, like I said, they're paid, but you're paid to do your job, but want what happens after, which is, yeah, is it, it incredible value. I, I like that. And it'd be interesting to see you. I mean, you've worked, have you worked in the music, in, the entertainment industry yourself, Neil, for a while, or is this the first no, time? I mean, I've, I've been in tech. I've been in tech, okay. but, um, Definitely a, a fan and, and monitoring it, a little bit of gaming, but um, everything you said about music as well resonates with us. Alex is a musician uh, okay. as well. Check out Specula Black. Um, <laughs> but uh, Bring that to the know, faction. Um, there's some really cool people doing stuff in music. Um, House of Keeper is going to be announcing a partnership pretty quick here. Okay. Actually, you know, but there's, there's some groups out there doing incredible stuff. You're right. Because again, it's, it's, it's about support. You know, 1% of musicians out there get 90% of the revenue from Spotify. Yeah, Nothing that's crazy. Down. And that's yeah. not cool. <laughs> so yeah. no, I think it's, it's about democratizing that. And, and Alex, I'll, I'll, I'll pump his tire a little bit. He's, uh, he's an advocate for all sides of that. And it's been, yeah, the, the team that he's brought to, to the... But actually, here's a funny story for you. Huh. you, you we have a... A little text message chain between Alex, myself, the other producers, and it's hilarious. I mean, some of it's some of it's can't say some of it's childish, <laughs> but but Alex, every now and then, the other night we got somebody, an actor friend of him, has like created a meme. It's like, why didn't I get a, a Gen Z role? And like he like he literally is getting actors mad at him that he that he didn't reach out to them. And it's just, uh, <laughs> and, and, but that, that's, you know, kind of the influence of, uh, and everything, but the reputation of other actors going out and saying how much fun they had and how passionate they are about this project. I yeah. mean, you're right. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to translate to the community, right? It's going to, they're going to feel that. Yeah. I love that, man. So what does, what do you think NFTs means for the entertainment industry then? Like just based on what you guys are doing, what kind of things are going to, I'm interested to see what do you think it's going to change? Like, NFTs is a great technology, but what does it do? I mean, I'll give you my perspective for you answer that is 
Well, well, I've, I've kind of speak about NFTs where people ask me and I say it's an unfungible token, uh, scarcity and so on. But the way I look at NFTs is a technology that can be applied to anything and add functionalities that brings value to anything, whether it's a painting, to whether it's a, a film, whether it's a, a picture. Like That's how I see it. But how do you think NFTs are going to bring the value? What, what does it mean for entertainment? I, I mean, I feel like I feel like we were we were already talking about just that I think it brings the value of the community being more the community being more involved. And I think I'm answering your question, just yeah, yeah. the community more involved with a show that they're a fan of, especially in sci-fi. Like I said, like you know, a fan will go there and make spend hundreds of dollars to make a costume of a character that they love, and then they'll spend money to go to Comic-Con in San Diego, buy a hotel go get the ticket to get in there. They're spending all this money just to see the person that they're cosplaying that's in there. In this aspect of the NFT is that they can be just a, as immersive, but actually have some kind of fractional ownership of the show. So it's not all about them giving to us. And, you know, we, and then we get, then we sign a picture at Comic-Con that they have to pay for. Like, I mean, it's one of those <laughs> things where I sit back and I go, you're spending so much money because you love the show that much. We want to be able to give something back. And I think that's what NFTs to me is the, to me being new to the NFT world, that, that is the thing that touches my heart. And I feel like we can give so much back to the people that are fans of the show. Yeah, and I think bragging rights, right? Bragging rights as being a who, yeah. Oh, yeah. who is the most. I mean, that's what it is. I am a real hardcore fan, and I can show you this by because I've invested in this, and and by doing that, like the, the amount, like you said, going to like these in real life events, you, you probably wait for hours to come and see someone like yourself. Whereas if you've got this NFT and you're that fat, you just get you've got your own queue, and you can go see yourself, oh, and, really? and then you know who they are because they're part of the community, and it gives them that kind of personal touch. What I think is amazing but go on sorry what you're going to go go and say now no no I was, I was going to say i think you know again just coming back from my, my tech nerd background um the tech itself means that any time so if, if i'm an artist let's say it's a fine artist forget music forget um anything else but actually music's the exact same <clears throat> i produce a song i produce a piece of art i put it on the blockchain it gets minted a year later, I can reach out and see who owns that. Yeah. Who's into it? Have a connection with them. Say thank you. Send them an unreleased track. Build something that, like, if there's one guy out there, I can I can click on his wallet. Oh, my God. He's gone and collected, like, five of my deep tracks. I can I don't have to go wallet by wallet. I can get those stats. It's, gonna, it's going to, you know, every true artist that, I, that I've met, wants their stuff to be appreciated and valued and they want to say thank you to the people that do it right it's it's not about um so many musicians it's not even about the money it's about the play count they want to know like are people digging this are they into this am i on to something is this resonating in the same way and for me as alex said it's it's that connection that's what i think nfts are going to give and it's the authenticity i i i, yeah. I personally want people to be doxxed. I want people to be proud of what they have out there. I think it creates a better environment. I think that, you know, one of the things we do on our, our side is we don't, we, we're very active in the community, let people know who we are. Um, because I think we've seen what happens when anonymous people get on Twitter yeah. and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. And it's not, stories. not cool. And that's one of the things that blew me away about Discord is that somebody was just like out of line and they're like kicked out. I'm like, wait a second. You can kick them out for saying that. <laughs> that's awesome because that's just a negative energy we don't need. And you yeah. can't do that on Twitter. So that, it's been, and to see the people, like I've got an amazing fan base that's super generous and they wanted to be a part of Discord because of what we were doing. And literally, oh, yeah, this is cool. literally like 15 people, and this was on Twitter, mm -hmm. and 15 people that are on Twitter that are also on Discord that follow Gen Zeros. We're just messaging her, go, okay, this is what you do. This is how you do it. And this is what you learn. And then her next tweet was, I just couldn't believe the love that I got for just wanting to join the Discord. And that just warmed my heart because these are people that have followed my career for years. And, and the community I don't even know yet have been just so open armed with people that wanting to learn and wanting to be a part of the community. And it's, it's just an amazing feeling. I love that, love that. So flipping on his head, 
Okay, you you guys as fans, potential collectors in the NFT space, you guys collect NFTs yourself? You collect any NFTs, projects? Um, so I just want to hear like any projects you guys been interested in collecting, keep part of the community. You can start with yourself, Neil. Like any. Um, so what am I into? Uh, when it comes to music, uh, I'm, I'm fans of a, a platform called Rocky. Uh, it was created by uh, a guy who's a he was a manager for 30 years. His whole thing is, is about empowering the 99%. It's got some huge DJs behind it. Uh, Seth Troxler, John Digby, like underground guys that are all about the love that put out incredible, like incredible tracks. So I'm a big fan of Rocky. Um, what other projects do I like? I mean, again, uh, I, I, I guess I geek out more on some of the ecosystems, things like um, okay. Manifold here in Vancouver. Shout out to Richard. His... Okay smart contracts are literally pieces of art. Like the way he's written them, the way that he's giving them away to the community as well is pretty incredible. Anyone that wants to get into minting, go check out Manifold. I think it's manifold.xyz uh, is their website. Um, we're really blessed in Vancouver. There's so many exciting projects here, right? I mean, Dapper Labs, NBA Top Shots is, is in our back, is here as well. Um, I mean, in terms of, of individual projects, I mean, I think World of Women was pretty incredible. The fact that they stepped up and, and, and really shone through. I like, uh, I mean, I could go on. I mean, I, I like some of the artists coming in and, and real ways like Damien Hurst, what he did. and Yeah, Larry. the currency. Yeah, yeah, I love that too. That, yeah. that was cool. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have to think about that a bit more, but I, I'm a okay. big fan of the tech. The tech, okay, cool. What about yourself, Alex? Any, any projects you've bought into or just fan of, like you think, or into that or... Honestly, just because I'm I'm brand new in it, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around what we're doing. I've just been yeah. following his lead, and he's been <laughs> telling me about stuff, and then I like it, and I kind of get involved in that way. And you know, and, and Jeremy bought a minted uh, uh, De Niro with an expression. I just thought that was that was super cool. So I, I'm that just lit. yeah, that, yeah, I'm just like just getting you know getting my bearings on. It. And if anything, I just been following his lead and appreciating that. Yeah, I've, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I, just because you're in the NFT space doesn't mean you have to collect. I think there's different routes. I mean, you either contributing to the space and building like you guys are, or you may just be a sole collector and flipping projects and be involved that way. Or, you know, like it's there's no right way to approach a space, but just being involved and yeah. bringing the innovation like you guys, I think that's, that's something that's going to be valued. So well, I, th I think for community members too, you know, there's so many derivative projects out there right now, right? Like, and, and that's just a, annoying. It's just, it's just noise. Um, but yeah, for anyone that wants to get into it, just start doing some research, just listening, go check out the projects you like. Yeah. Join mm -hmm. their discord. You don't have to collect straight away. It doesn't have to be about the money. As you said, just be part of the community. Yeah. So I'm going to throw across some uh, potential industries, things that may disrupt uh, and just just give me your spin on it. Like this is just me thinking off the top of my head. So if you can't answer, don't. It's no pressure. I haven't. This ain't set up. Okay. So what do you think of digital fashion? Then it is. Oh, it's it's it's, it's going to be so cool. I mean, especially once we get into the metaverse and and the wearables. But I think um, I don't think you're going to buy any luxury item in the future without getting an NFT with it, just mm -hmm. to prove its authenticity. Right. Like. Um, you're not going to buy a piece of art or a Gucci bag unless you get that NFT to prove that it's that it's legit. Like I mean, it's yeah. just going to go with it, right? And then you're going to have that NFT to, you know, trade and show off and and, and do. It, it's the ultimate flex as well. Yeah, it takes away the whole counterfeit inside, doesn't it? Like in regards to if you put if you put in the physical item, you've got a tag in there that goes back to the actual NFT on the blockchain. That can you can verify it there and then for your phone. I think that's just gonna is amazing that that can't be really just yeah. the side of it. It makes sense, right? Yeah, hundred percent. What are you gonna say? Uh, you gonna you gonna jump in there? Oh, I, I was just saying, <clears throat> just because of um, you know zero contact and you know Rick Dugdale produced and directed that, and he had the idea of it going to NFTs, and that that was me first learning about it and understanding that you know, it went out, went out as an auction and I just didn't even understand what, what, what do you mean? Hey, the auction side is interesting. Yeah. yeah. It was, which was really interesting to me and, and the fans and people that would sit there and just for the, for the, the clout and the bragging rights of owning an original piece. Yes. That to me was just really exciting because I mean, it's Anthony Hopkins, you know, three-time Academy Award winner. Like 
how crazy is that 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 there's a fan out there and even in that in that space in the film there's paintings that are behind anthony hopkins while he's playing the piano and those are his original paintings and they're also thrown in as nfts hey. so it's just interesting how it piqued my interest in how rick was doing it um and for the community so for me you know, and just being a part of this aspect of it in a different light, more than an actor, um, the the ideas of and the creativity that can happen in this space is just is blowing my mind. Yeah, and I feel that yeah, like, I, yeah I, I, I agree with you, man. I was, I was just gonna, I was just gonna touch on something then, but it just kind of slipped my mind. So um, <laughs> don't worry about that. But um, let's move on to the next sector. What about NFTs in marriage? <laughs> so it's a contract. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so are you are you free? Okay, so let's let's move forward. I mean, this this I I like to talk about this. Like, how can NFTs be? I've got my idea how it can be introduced. I mean, for, for example, prenups. If you yeah, wow. contracts, oh yeah, they'll, they'll they'll be smart contracts for sure that unlock certain things automatically. Um, I don't know. Honey, <laughs> have you minted yet? <laughs> I said it's going to be, have you minted before we get married? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so someone else, she trades it to someone else. That would be <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's a twist. That would be a twist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what about sports and entertainment? So sports and entertainment around that side of it. Uh, I actually co-founded a company called Sport Ninja that um, is doing some really cool things around dynamic NFTs for the amateur market. I think that, you know, when you look back at um, another community like sci-fi where you get rabid fans, yeah, it's the sports community, right? And, and that connection and following someone, as you said, that idea of, um, uh, what, what do you call it? Bragging rights. Yeah, yeah. Able to say that I knew this person was going to do whatever, and I have their college card or their, you know, I know in in, in football in, in the UK where they get signed at like 14 years old, like Crazy. being able to own pieces of this and be a true fan and, and see that it's good. It's, and then of course the gambling and fantasy sports aspect with NFTs, it's multi multi billion dollar industry coming there. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. I mean. What I was going to touch on earlier on, Alex, is what you touched on, fans, and what you just said there, Neil, fans. Like, people ask, why do these entities sell for so much? And I said, the market decides. Now, you, you can't say to somebody how much that product should or that, that piece should be valued by. It depends on how much that means to you. And I feel that, like, fans will pay, like you've probably seen yourself, anything, <laughs> people's anything to get something uh, that they value. So that's why I feel that, the, the price is maybe questioned, but who's the, the market decides, isn't it? Don't you don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. It's it's all going to be a free market move in that one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um. But but look at this way. Look at it this way. Forget forget the monetary side for a minute. Let's say you are fourteen years old, fifteen yeah. years old. You're committed to your sport, but you can't afford to get a game to Old Trafford or or whatever else. But you go to your, you show up every day with your phone to practice, to the gym, you check in every time, and you have a streak of like 20 unbroken training sessions. And that unlocks a chance for you to get a ticket to go see that game, to walk on the field, to meet the players, because wow. you show dedication to that team or to that, to your, to that sport that isn't just some rich dude that has enough money to buy a box, right? It's, it's a true fan and you know, we work with electronic arts a little bit. They know that the world of FIFA, the world of, uh, of everything, there's um, an authenticity that leads to um, the community profiting from the top to the bottom built on the person that grinds and shows up every day. And yeah. that's, that's not even about price, right? That's something that you cannot, that you can prove using an NFT that becomes this ticket that then it turns into something very, very real. I think mean, that's cool. No, I love that. I was speaking to somebody about that uh, last week. It's like tokenizing behavior, like like you said, yeah. and being rewarded for that. So whether that be in acting or whether that be as a musician, but if there is some kind of funding and you can 
prove you've done this and you're rewarded for that, I think that's going to open so many doors and so many opportunities for different people, which I think is amazing. That's what I think is amazing. It's just helping people. Uh, I think Web3 is about. Well, we, we've got a friend, Jada Merritt, Jay, yeah. who's producing a project called Rise and Shine. It's going to be coming out soon, but it's doing exactly that. It's, uh, it's like uh, TikTok on steroids, but what it does is creates challenges for youth to promote mental health and youth, in, youth empowerment. Um, where they do these challenges that they prove and they earn an NFT to show that they actually did it. And then those yeah. NFTs connect them to celebrities and, and mentors. And it's really cool. It's, what very, it's a very cool site. Yeah. I love that. Well, guys, I mean, I've kept you for long enough. I've, you've brought so many, so much value. I've lo- I love the sound of the project. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm looking to get involved myself now. Was <laughs> so um, I hadn't it's got involved. Fraction, right? So it's I've, 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 no, I've got it. I've got to look into that first. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 that. I'm not been there straight away. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to look into that first and see where I want to go with that. But yeah, definitely, uh, listeners, uh, definitely go check out uh, what these guys are doing. I'll put the links uh, below. Is there anything else you want to leave us with in regards to maybe what's to come in the next month or so um, or to entice stay, them? Stay, yeah. stay there's, there's a drop coming soon. Uh, we're just finalizing exactly when, but that one's definitely weeks, not months. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah, get excited. Okay, cool. So we've got the drop, we've got the game coming soon. Uh, and then, guys, you need enough time to pick your faction, so make sure you do your research. Um, like I said, love having you guys on. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Neil. Uh, thank you, take thank you, sir. Um, stay safe and everyone stay, li- stay listening, stay blessed.